The Rosicrucians, very fascinating group. I think they're probably my favorite secret society because they're pretty clear about claiming that they are the oldest secret wisdom tradition known to mankind and they claim that their lineage comes all the way back to the times of the pharaoh Thutmose the third who this is like post atlantis obviously but all these different egyptian temples and mystery schools are teaching all this stuff in secret and the pharaoh Thutmose the third was like damn this is interesting <laughs> you know what i mean so he decreed that all these schools would be united into one one mystery school and the rosicrucians the rosicrucians claimed that they are that school. Oh, and whoa. like there's there's very real evidence that they have been operating in the world since at least the 1600s, and like whoa. there there were manifestos popping up all around Europe from the Rosicrucians claiming that they've been hiding in secret for aeons, waiting for humanity to be on the cusp of get this, the age of Aquarius. Wow. For them to make themselves public to like dispense the knowledge. Okay, and let me let me just piggyback off that for a second. Sixteen hundreds. You know, they don't know how old the pyramids or the Sphinx are. Exactly. And they they believe that they are actually so much older than we originally thought. Um, they're also learning that like they channel energy literally from the bottom to the top. The pyramids, it's, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like they are they're they're starting to discover that they might actually be extremely high tech like structures. Like, like energy conduits yes, or something. Energy yeah. exactly, energy conduits. So if if those things were built by let's just say the Atlantean society, you right. know the pyramids, the Sphinx, and whatever, and then now you're talking about they're in hiding until the age of Aquarius, and we also know of a little alignment that's supposed to happen in a few years, mm -hmm. uh, aligning with the Sphinx. Yep. So if we're following that same thread, then like this is real. The, yeah, and they mapped out when exactly when that was going to happen they built the sphinx to be like a, a precise compass. Yeah. yeah a compass to the you know it's like but dude the, the craziest part which is what you just said is like dude think about my dad he's a he's like a baptist and a i say baptist because he was born baptist and then married my mom and became pentecostal mm. dude he started having experiences in 2007 he's like we're like this is weird you know we, we you know we think they're angels or whatever but like what the heck, you know? Yeah, yeah. Then in 2012, he sees this l female entity and she starts coming out talking about the age of Aquarius. Yeah. Dude, we had never talked about that. Never heard of that. My mom knew the song from the 1960s, right, but that's right, yeah. it. Like, yeah. it's just weird. And then like me, you know, learning about that in 2012 from my dad and she's showing him all the Egyptian pyramids and all this crazy stuff. And then I spend the next, I guess it's 11 years now going down these rabbit holes, trying to corroborate my dad's experiences with all this ancient material. And they very plainly say it's all about the age of Aquarius. It's like yeah. something's happening here. Yeah. That was one of the things that always jumped out to me is that like, yeah, he, your dad came from a completely Southern Christian background. And then all of a sudden he has this experience and now he's talking about Egyptian gods and like all this crazy mystical stuff. I'm like, and then, and then going back and, finding it in ancient historical right. texts corroborating that this information <clears throat> it didn't he didn't just make it up yeah it's like do it's you, ancient did he it's like did he sit around and super quickly read all of these thousands of years worth of history no he was told this right. by a spirit right by a spirit and then we're going back and being like oh it's real like they've been writing about this for thousands of years right that's that is the most mind blowing piece it's of this spooky. to me. It is spooky. It's very spooky. I mean, it's like it, it, it's a it's a huge indicator to me that it is real. And then another thing, which like I don't think people really get this part because my dad doesn't talk a lot publicly about reincarnation. Uh -huh. But like I'm telling you, when I was like 15, 16, 17, out of nowhere, one day my dad just started talking about reincarnation mm. and like the beings imposed on him that you know it's what's up yeah. and like i didn't believe in reincarnation even until i was like 
like a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like he just out of the blue starts talking about reincarnation. I remember being a teenager and he's showing me all these videos on kids claiming they're like, you know, I, I can remember my past life. There's like documentaries about it. Oh, like really dude. interesting. I've ones. seen tons of those videos. It's th that's one of the things that got me fully believing in reincarnation. These little three and four year old kids giving full accounts of former lives that they go back and find records right. and corroborate the information. Like they have like dreams of like specific details in life and then this documentary crew will take them to the other country they claim they're from and like the grave is there and like it all checks out like it's wild yeah. stuff yeah oh yeah wild stuff yeah but um yeah so that my point with that is like this this material theosophy like it it's it's one of the most important things about it is reincarnation and karma wow it's crazy but yeah anyway so moving on from the rays the rebirth and rays. reincarnation Evolutionary progress is based on the process of rebirth. Reincarnation is the method of our evolution of consciousness. Mm. Every thought, every action that we have under this law sets in motion a cause. We are creating causes all the time. The effects stemming from all these causes make our lives good or ill. At this moment, we are making the rest of this life and our next life. We are receiving what is called karma. The law of karma is the law of cause and, uh, cause and effect. The effects from our previous deeds, good and bad, create the conditions of our life today. And the results of our deeds today create the conditions of the next period of life, either now or when we return in our next body. The soul magically creates a series of bodies through which it can eventually really demonstrate itself as a soul. At that point, we are well on the way towards the end of the evolutionary cycle. It takes hundreds of thousands of incarnations per soul. Yeah. But once that point is reached and the soul looking at its reflection, the man or woman in incarnation sees that it is beginning to respond to the soul's quality and is becoming more divine, more unselfish, more altruistic, more concerned for other people and not just for the satisfaction of its own desires. It stimulates the vehicle and begins a process which ends the evolutionary journey the process of initiation. Wow. Initiation has been brought into life to speed up the evolutionary process. It is not essential. We could evolve without it, but it would take millions and millions of years to get to that point right. where we are today. Mathematically, if you think about it, every single soul has to go through hundreds of thousands of incarnations. Yeah, that would be so many millions of years. Exactly. If there was no initiation right, phase. Right. Um, there are five great planetary initiations to perfection. Jesus taught reincarnation. Mm -hmm. He even in the gospel, he makes comments about John being the second coming of Elias, which is an old Testament prophet. And then it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible. It's like he come on. It's right there. And then exactly. And then there's another, uh, there's a parable about a child being born blind. And then Jesus asks the people listening, like how, who they ask him or no, no, he asks them. So who sent the child or the father? Mm. Think about it. What do you mean sinned? He was born blind. Yeah. Previous life. Right. Yeah. Who sinned for this child to be born blind? Oh my God. But that's, dude. that's, whew, it just goes right over people's heads. Of course. Because I mean, you're, you're trained to completely ignore anything about reincarnation. And then exactly like, I think we said this in the very first episode, let's get mystical. Um, Benjamin Krim says this right here in the text. The guy asks Benjamin Krim, well, wh why is reincarnation so prevalent in the East, but it's not mentioned in Western traditions. And he says it was, it's just the emperor Justinius erased it. There you, it they had the yeah. second council of Constantinople and you can look this up. It's history. They had the second. Con Council of Constantinople mm -hmm. and they put a decree banning reincarnation. Yep. It's real history. Mm -hmm. Literally.